All right, guys, Mo checking in with kind of a more trans related video. Um, you know, it's been a while since I've done one of those. And I try to keep it, you know, kind of an even channel, but I definitely have been falling more in the bodybuilding category as of late. So kind of a more serious video, a little bit more serious topic. Um, and I kind of want to go over defining masculinity. I think it's different for all of us, um, different in various cultures. And it's something... It's kind of funny because it's more of a trans topic, but it's something that I've been thinking about lately um, and it's been inspired by bodybuilding. It's, it's, it's been inspired by going to the gym. Um, so I'm sure a lot of us can relate. Like you go to the gym and you see, I think you see almost a, a, a huge spectrum of masculinity, right? Um, in, in a stereotypical way, I guess. I mean, you see, um, you see kind of, those who appear to be butch lesbians, which is probably what a lot of the people at my gym think that I am, even though I identify as a trans man. Um, so that's a whole like secret category of masculinity. Um, you know, you have the guys that are super macho and super loud and um, probably are doing those kinds of things to assert uh, their masculinity, maybe because they have some insecurities in them, in themselves. Um, you kind of have the guys that stand off in the corner and look really intimidated and sad because of you know the macho dude over there screaming and yelling um making a scene <laughs> um you have all these like you have this whole spectrum of how people kind of fit into this category of masculinity and um how they are respected within that category and it's funny how i guess you know going to the gym it, it's a it's an outward it's how you project your masculinity but i kind of wanted to talk about like um, and it's more of a conversation. So I'd like you guys to chime in, inbox me, comment. Um, like, what about the inner things that make someone masculine? Um, you know, it's easy to judge those guys at the gym. You know, it's easy to judge the quiet guy in the corner that seems scared. It's easy to judge the super macho guy. Um, it's easy to, like, place these judgments. But maybe they have these, like, internal characteristics uh, that otherwise define masculinity. Um, even though sometimes we project those, those traits in different ways, and maybe those ways aren't as acceptable, uh, to some people, and maybe they're not as likable. Um, but what about these internal characteristics? So I came up with a few, and I was thinking, like, what does it mean to be a man, I guess? Um, and what kind of man would I, do I want to be? Do I see myself as? And the things that I came up with were, um, respectable, like being respectable, um, integrity, so being trustworthy, being a provider. Um, I feel important in that way. I'm in a long-term relationship, so I feel that providing is important. Um, empathy, being able to level with other people, emotionally um, especially. Intellect, I think that was kind of the last one. Um, and that doesn't mean like book smart or anything, but just uh, I think there was like, there's this like quote that I saw and it's, it's like all over, you know, all over the place. I don't remember who it was by, but it was like, I think it's Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt. And it was like, um, big minds discuss ideas, um, like mediocre minds discuss events and small minds discuss people. Um, and I was, so, I mean like kind of an intellect, 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 <laughs> meaning like the ability to discuss ideas and like being able to get your thoughts across. Um, so I don't know what you guys think about those, those like categories. And I see them all, um, in myself. And I honestly think that, um, anybody, of course, anyone who, who, um, claims femininity can, can, resp can hold these ideals too. And that's something that I kind of think is important that it's like, these are all random and, uh, just, I mean, yeah, completely random kind of categories that I came up with, you know, respectability, integrity, provider, empathy, intellect. That's not something that a um, someone who claims to be feminine can't hold. But it's just like, it's how we project those, um, those ideals that place you into the category of like masculinity or, or projecting masculinity or projecting femininity. Um, and I just think that, I don't know, I just think that that's interesting. It's all socially constructed, right? I mean, it's just, it's all... It's all how the society that you live in and the culture that you live in, um, you know, perceives certain characteristics and they put those, they lump all those certain characteristics and how you, how you, um, emulate those characteristics and boom, you're either masculine or you're feminine. Um, and, you know, maybe as trans guys, wh what is it like to maybe be stuck in the middle? Uh, you know, it's, it's, 
I certainly find myself to be more masculine than feminine, but I haven't lost, like lost all of my feminine projections of those, of those traits that I had mentioned earlier. Um, and I love being in the middle and my partner loves that I'm in the middle too. I think she, she really respects that. Um, and like, I guess the basic, I'm totally ranting. I apologize. But like, I guess the basic like premise of this is that like, um, you know, our projections, you know, really, it's like what, it's like how society categorizes us though. But that doesn't like mean that it defines us as a person, you know, I mean, the guy that's really loud and screaming at the gym, he's not a bad person. He's projecting his, his traits in a, in a particular way, but he's not necessarily a bad person. Um, but we do automatically put him in the category of like a macho man, you know, and um, the guy that's being quiet in the corner, not lifting a whole lot of weight, he's automatically in the category of like maybe being more like feminine or less masculine, effeminate. Um, and it's just unfortunate because I think it's all in how we identify and it's how we feel, but everyone is so quick to place a label on you, um, just because of the way that you project things. And at the end of the day, no one but you, and maybe people you're close with really know how you identify. Um, so chime in guys. Um, like I said, that's kind of all over the place. Um, that wasn't meant to be, you know, here nor there of not like trying to put out some weird propaganda thing just like I don't know just things that kind of kind of interest me and another thing last thing I'll say is I'm in a, a a psychology course right now of course it's one of my majors and um at the beginning of the class the professor we we read an article about culture so the professor wanted us to all go around it's a small class there's like 10 or 12 people because um, it's a senior level class and she wanted us to all talk about our like culture and like our ethnicity and what we identified with and I was like toward the end of the circle so toward one of the last people to go and everyone was talking about their, um, their ethnicity, like their, uh, backgrounds, you know, German, Scottish, African-American, whatever. Um, uh, and like, I just remember thinking the whole time that I didn't really know what to say. And the first thing I said when it was my turn was that like, I have intersecting identities a lot. I happen to be of mixed race. So I'm half white, half black. Um, you know, I, 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 I identify with the T on the LGBTQIA spectrum, but I once upon a time identified with the L. Uh, like I, I have so many of these, like I have bring so many different perspectives to the table, you know, and um, and it, it just like made me think of like the whole categorizing thing, you know, like I project certain ideals, like this, the color or the color of my skin, um, the way I present myself, the way I dress, and someone automatically lumps me in a category of, you know, Sometimes I'm lumped in the woman, the female category, sometimes the male, um, sometimes the, you know, I don't know what the hell you are. I'm staring at you in between. Um, you're black, you're white, you're, you know, Hispanic people, you know, automatically want to put you in a category without really having gotten to know you. So I actually thought the exercise we did in class was so great because, um, uh, a good chunk of the class, um, were, they were white. So it was really cool, like seeing these people who all, um, you know, people sometimes who are white claim to like not feel like they have culture. Um, you know, like someone who, you know, like someone in the Middle East or something or someone in like South America, you know, they seem so culture so different. Um, and they, they, you know, were saying, joking how they didn't feel like they had culture, but they were enriched with so much awesomeness. You know, we had like mixes of people that were like German and Scottish and um, Italian and it's, it's just, it was, I don't know. Anyway, it was so cool. It was so cool seeing more on the inside of these people um, and actually learning who they were instead of just like lumping into them into like the white category, you know what I mean? Or into this category, to that category. Um, so anyway, chime in, like I said, ranting. I'll catch you guys next time.